Hey everyone, welcome again to some more NPy screen programming tutorials and videos in the Python language. So uh, here we go. In the last video, we actually got a, uh, a new kind of framework set up with our code. We were actually getting the application objects working uh, along with our form objects that we learned about in the video before that. Right now, our, <laughs> our code still doesn't really do anything. We don't really have any uh, interaction going on right now, but we're still learning, so hopefully that's okay. Um, now, we added the form to our application object and the kind of the manager for us with this main ID. We passed in the object and kind of gave it a few arguments. But when we tried to run the code, an interesting thing happened, right? We would get displayed our form, we'd have our OK button, everything is nice and dandy, except for the fact that we can't do anything. And when I try and exit out of the program, the Enter button to OK, I can't get out. So we got a control C to break out of this, and uh, why is that? What's going on there? So I'm going to hop back on over to our documentation. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to save a new file, 04. Cool. And uh, now I'll look at documentation as to what's really going on here. So we've been looking at these functions that help run the uh, application object. Uh, of course, we've got run, which is what we called to actually start the program and start our main loop. Um, starting form, oh, that's an interesting variable. I, I won't at least touch upon it. I'll probably never use it, but I do want to let you know that it exists. If for any reason you need to change the name of the default form, rather from, uh, rather than it being main. Where is it? I just hit the page up button, and <laughs> now I don't know where I am. All right. Yeah, rather than having the default form with an ID of main, you can change starting form variable to change, uh, what it should be. So, Okay. Aside from that tangent, here's what I want to look at now. Once an application is running, the following methods control which form is presented to the user. Now here's an interesting one. NPS app manage dot set next form. What this does is it sets the form to be displayed when the current one exits. Huh. There are other functions to, uh, you know, set next form previous, set the form to be displayed when the current one exits to go back to the previous one in history. Switch form will get you from one form to another, all by the ID here, and uh, you can bypass any exit logic of the current form if you like set up any, you know, like closing functions or function calls or stuff like that. And then a uh, switch form previous will immediately switch you to the previous form that you were just at in the history. Um, all those other functions are probably things you can use later on. For now, I'm really curious what this set next form does, because when we close out of our program, when we try and exit, when the current form exits, we're not able to get out of our program. Why is that? So here we go. Let's do a little bit more reading. Once all of your forms are ready and registered with the Manage Instance class, you should call Run. <laughs> okay, that's what we do. And uh, this method will activate the default form, which should have been given an ID of main. You can change this to, by uh, changing the starting form variable. Okay, we did that, and we just learned about that. So, what else? Thereafter, the next form to be displayed will be the one specified by the instance variable next active form. Huh. Whenever a form edit loop exits, the form specified here will be activated. If next active form is none, then the main loop will exit. Oh, okay. So, next active form should be set by calling the application's set next form form ID method. Oh, that's the one that we just read about right up here but we want to set it to none, so we'll actually exit our main loop and we'll close our program. Okay, so this documentation used to suggest that you should set the attribute directly. There aren't any plans to deprecate this attribute, but setting it directly should be avoided, so we'll end up using that setNextForm method. So we'll do a little bit more reading before we do that, because it looks like it gives us kind of a warning here. There are three mechanisms that form should use to control the next active form. So all forms that are registered with the manage object that don't have a special method activate will have their method after editing called, if they have it. Uh, okay. So all forms that are registered that do not have the special method activate. I don't know if we have activate. Do you guys know if we have activate? Let's see. Anyway, let's just keep reading. 
logic to determine what the next active form should be will go there. Oh, okay. So it will go, it'll have the method after editing called. So that's what we should put our set next active form to be. That's where we should place that function call. If you're expecting your users, your users to select an OK or cancel button, this is the preferred way to switch screens. So this after editing function is probably going to be pretty handy for us. The application method switch form causes the application to immediately stop editing the current form and switch to the other one. Um, forms registered with the activate method uh, will usually instead call instead the usual edit method. This can contain additional logic. Oh, this is not the preferred method, but may allow greater flexibility. Okay. <laughs> uh, if it's not the preferred method to use activate, then I guess we'll use uh, after editing. That's fine. Okay. So, I think that's enough reading and understanding what we're actually doing here. So let's define that new method. Let's define after editing. in our app object. And of course it takes the self argument because it's inside of an object. And we'll call that uh, set next form, right? Well here's an interesting thing. We're calling this in the, uh, oh sorry, this is actually in the form object, not the app object. Right. All forms have to be registered with this activate method or the after editing method so it's in the form object all right let's let's go down to uh, the next page in the documentation read a little bit more about that then or see if it has any stuff about it displaying and editing forms we covered those forms may exit Looks like these are other possible forms that we can play with later on. Wow, there's a lot of options here. Menus? That's pretty cool. Okay, I guess it doesn't give us any more explanation about that. That's fantastic. I guess we'll look at the code that they offer then, and hopefully we'll try and figure it out. So, the code that we have to run is the after editing function, right, but we have to run it within our form object. So define inside the form object now, rather than the app object, define after editing, self keyword, because we're inside of an object, and it looks like what they're doing is they're saying parent app dot set next form. That would make sense, because that's the only way you can actually access the app object if that's like the keyword that allows you to do that. So let's do that. Let's say self.parentapp.setNextForm and if we set it to none, then our main loop will exit, right? Let's try it. Python 04. We got our NPy screen form to display. If I hit the enter button, hey! Our program exits. Awesome. Okay, so that took a little bit of piecing together and a little bit of reading but I think now we understand what that next active form does for us. So, okay. Even if we had forms afterwards that we would want to use, we can apply those, or we can set them with this function. But for now, since we want to exit out of the code, exit out of the program, we'll just pass in none. And it looks like that's what it does for us. It lets us uh, get out of the program. Cool. I think we're good. I think that's all I wanted to touch upon on this video. I know it was kind of long-winded, a lot of me talking and doing a lot of reading, but hey, that's, that's a good way to learn. I hope that my videos kind of supplement your understanding and uh, can guide you along with this documentation stuff. Because documentation is really a programmer's reference. Like When you're working, you're not going to be able to remember everything. And uh, I know I certainly don't remember everything. I try to, but a lot of times we need to look up online and ask for help sometimes. So definitely use the documentation, and I hope for learning purposes, we can go through it and then build some cool stuff. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you're enjoying this series. I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's kind of nice, and uh, <laughs> I'll see you in the next tutorial.